Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right now, media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. There we go. Now we go. Now we're on. Yeah, well, welcome to 2021. So it's good to see you. We have a few in person worship this morning. It's great to see each one of you in this new year. And for all of you that are worshiping online, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're warm and, and uh, staying out of whatever weather it may be. It's a little dicey up here in the Dallas area, but it's going to be fine. You know, we, we uh, North Texans, when we have a forecast of maybe an inch of snow, it's snowmageddon. So that's what we're facing later. But we'll be out of here. You'll be home safely. But thank you for being here. We would encourage you to register your attendance. There's multiple ways to do that. There's a registration form online that Angela has set up. Just let us know that you're here. This is checkout week for the church and one of the issues that all churches are dealing with is how do we measure attendance? You know, normally it's easy to do. The ushers get in the balcony and they just simply, I, I watch them up there, there's on either side of the balcony, and they're doing this. And they're counting, yeah, see, Gary's over there laughing because he's one of them. But they're counting attendance. Well, we can do that. It's pretty easy here, but what's really difficult is online. So we're coming up with, with standards as how to do that. But please let us know you're here. Send up a message of peace. Pass the peace. Invite your friends to join us as we worship together. And again, welcome to 2021. It's going to be a fantastic year. I mean, anything compared to last year, 2020, is going to be better. So, But 2021 is going to be a great year. You saw an introduction as we began with Right Now Media. I'll have a little more to say about that at the end of our service, but I hope you got an email from the church and you can log into that. So with that, I also want to make an announcement that it's going to be a little different than what you have on your, your screen today because Eli, our pianist, is not here. Out of an abundance of caution with potential COVID exposure. Gary and Sean are not here. Gary uh, is not here out of caution for everyone. Same thing with Sean. So the music's going to be a little different. I really appreciate the praise team stepping in, doing what they do. But we don't have any vocalists this morning. If you know the songs, and we're going to cut some of the songs out, but if you know the songs that are being played, sing along. You can be the choir. You can be the praise team. But welcome. And uh, let's see, there's no song there, so I'm going. See, I even have to adjust what my thing looks like. I believe we're going now into our pastoral prayer. We have a number of prayer concerns. Prayer is such a fundamental part of our Christian faith. Prayer works, people. Now, prayer may not be the answer. We pray specifically for this or that to occur. And God wants us to. Jesus gave the example. But Jesus also said, thy will be done. Prayer is a communication with our Creator. 
Prayer is that time where we go de- deep into our souls and our hearts and we lift them up to God. God knows what is on our hearts, but it's that opportunity just to express it. I remember one time when former pastor David Weber said that we in the Western society tend to pray by bowing our heads, holding our hands like this. I agree with him, and I've often been that prayer person who prefers this. I look towards heaven, and I know God is in conversation with me. So whatever way you feel comfortable praying, here in attendance in person or if you're online, maybe it's a place of solitude and beauty within your home or your yard. Or maybe it's simply with a family member that you're sitting next to. And whether you hold hands or give them a fist pump or simply in your mind reflect on how important they are. But here are some of the prayer concerns we have. And I'll see if I can get all of these covered because there are a number of them. Some of these date from the last year of 2026, the last week of 2020. Ruby's friend Lisa Uh, with COVID, continuing to pray for her. For those who have tested positive for COVID and and, uh, may have been recovering, uh, we were praying for Rick and Mary Ann's son and daughter-in-law and sister-in-law who lost her mother. And a loss in any time is difficult, but a loss in COVID time is especially difficult. Darlene, the same with her aunt, her niece with health issues, We have prayer concerns for Brittany, one of our praise team members. She had some health concerns, and we pray for her. Peggy's friends, Peggy's friend who's lost six church members to COVID, not our members, but six of her friends' church members to COVID. We continue to pray for Bobby, Chris, and Bruce, and pray that their recovery will continue on track. We pray for the teachers of Claudia, We pray for Jeff's great uncle, Pete, who passed away. We pray for Catherine, has COVID, for Don and John needing prayers for comfort and healing. We pray for Val's mother, Bo, Dean, but Bo, who is in the hospital in his critical condition and Valerie will be traveling down to see her mom here leaving sometime tomorrow. So safe travels and, and a recovery for Bo. For Bonnie's friend, Mary, in the hospital with infection. For Steve and Angela's friend, Melissa and Kevin at home with COVID. Christy's boss and pregnant co-worker battling COVID. Wendy's dad had surgery. He's doing well. We continue to pray for recovery. Armin, Jerry's, one of our members, Jerry, uh, West Point graduate and West Point uh, gung-ho guy, praying for his friends. Armin, a classmate who's hospitalized and critical and Reggie and his family. They're all West Point classmates who passed away from COVID on the last day of the year. So Jerry, for your friends and your family and those who are so important to him, we pray for his classmates. He's had a number of classmates that have passed in the, in the recent years, and it's very difficult. A joy that our son and daughter-in-law, Rusty and Tracy, have recovered from COVID. And all out of quarantine now, we got to spend New Year's together. So that's a blessing. And then we have continued prayers for the recovery of Bill's cousin, Trudy, who is back home after surgery to remove a brain tumor. So we're thankful for that success. And for Bill's friends who have COVID, Jalinda in hospital on a vent, Colma who is hospitalized, and Reuben on a vent in a hospital is having a difficult time with uh, only one lung and developing cancer. So a number of prayer concerns. Uh, We also pray for, and Anita, I lost it. It just blanked out. Anita's friend, Kevin, who passed away from COVID, and his wife, Deb, who's in the hospital with COVID. Are there other prayer concerns? Because there are a number of them, and and we're still working out the logistics of making sure we capture all of them online. Yes. Last week, we said we had two friends who have both been hospitalized for COVID, but one has passed away. And uh, the other one is a very good relationship. 
friends that have passed away from COVID, another that's going to be hospitalized, and uh, the struggles that that is. So peace be with both of you as you care for your dear friends. Yes. Oh, a co-worker's daughter. Hmm. Okay. okay, a former co-worker who's died of COVID and a good friend who's uh, had a car wreck and passed away in that accident. And uh, horrendous in this time and place. We pray for comfort for the family of all those involved. Are there others? Praise team, always y'all are behind me. Yes. Mentor Royce Coatney, who's um, fell and broke uh, his femurs in the hospital and then caught COVID while in the hospital. The last I heard, he was doing better, but he's still in the hospital. All right. Thank you. That was Steve from the uh, sound booth in the back. I kept looking around like, is that Steve? Uh, but there's a Steve here and the Steve there, but a co worker in the hospital and struggling or caught it in the hospital. This time and place when we have record numbers of COVID positive tests, now there's record number of people being tested, but the numbers are still very, very high. We cannot take for granted anything. The vaccines are rolling out there. I encourage you to get one as soon as you're eligible. But um, let's be careful. Let's take the precautions. Let's not, let's not get lackadaisical in our, our efforts. There is an additional prayer concern I want to lift up, and it's been on the news, and I'm sure it's been on everybody's hearts. The issues we saw this past week in our nation's capital, I have stood before you in the past during prayer time at elections and said, we are so thankful we live in a democracy, a republic, that allows us to have free elections, that we can vote, that nobody stops us from voting. We can exercise our right, and that we have transitions of power that are peaceful. Whether you're this side or that side or in the middle or somewhere, I don't know, back in left field or right field or in the bullpen, we've had transitions of power that have been peaceful. I believe we will still have that. Our president has committed to a transition that is peaceful and successful. But I pray that everybody, regardless of what side you may reside, that you will also pray for peaceful transition of power. One of the beautiful things about our country at the national uh, presidential level is every four years we get a choice. We have a choice. And every six years you have a choice for senators. And every two years you have a choice for House members. We have choices to make. And I pray that we will make the choice of peace and prayer. That just as some have been praying for the transition, that we will continue to do that, and we will indeed have peaceful transition in nine days. Let us pray for that, each one of us, for it is so important for this country. Let us go down to the Lord in prayer, and I'll finish us with the Lord's Prayer that we may say in unison. Gracious and holy God, you have heard the prayer concerns on our hearts. There are a lot of them. And these are only the prayer concerns that we know of that people have put to us in name. Dear God, there are prayer concerns on each person's hearts known only to you. As we begin the year 2021, we're optimistic of a future that is so radically different than the past. But dear God, we still have friends and family that are suffering and dying. We still have friends and family that are impacted by COVID. Dear God, we lift all of them up. And in the midst of this pandemic, life goes on. People needing procedures in the hospital and outpatient procedures. Life goes on and we pray that they'll continue to be safe. And for those that have difficult recoveries, that they will know the presence of your spirit. 
that their friends and families who are worried, who are uncertain of the future, may find a peace that only you can provide. Dear God, these are uncertain times and they're difficult times. Send down your peace upon each one of us and help us reflect in the knowledge that you are always with us, that you walk beside us, that you want relationship with us. Dear God, we do ask for our prayers to be answered. We make no apologies for that. We pray for the outcomes we want. Dear God, give us the peace knowing that your will be done. And there are also good things to celebrate, dear God, and we thank you for those. For those who have been suffering with disease, COVID, and others that have recovered, we thank you for that recovery. For the dawning of a new day that we take for granted, Dear God, let us never take tomorrow for granted. And dear God, for our nation, we pray for peaceful transition of power. And we pray that new leadership and those newly elected from whatever side of the aisle they are on, that your spirit will be with them to do the right things, to move us all into the direction that you would have us go. Dear God, may we live in peace and love with each other and our neighbors. Dear God, sometimes we do not know how to pray, and we reflect on the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we offer it today in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Wait, what? Okay, I'm not going to lie. I've been listening to them all this morning, and I've been dancing like a crazy person because what? We have these people. They do this for us. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Sorry, I had to take a second to do that because, I mean, it is amazing what we can do. And guess what? They just figured out they were doing that by themselves this morning. So that was a change. A change. Right? That was something that had to be different. So I'm going to start my message the way that I normally do. Good morning, First Church. Welcome to winter in Dallas. Today's current weather conditions call for temperatures of 36 degrees, which means we should not have snow, but we will, with cloudy skies and snow and rain. With weather conditions like these, we better plan accordingly. Like wear gloves, jackets, and scarves, and I don't know, bring an umbrella because Dallas can't decide if it's going to rain or snow. I really, really, really do not like winter. I don't. I've lived in warm weather for most of my life. I lived in Japan for three years, and when it got to 66 degrees, I was in boots and a big, huge jacket because it was freezing. It really wasn't, but I thought it was. We pretended that it was cold. I wasn't the only one, by the way. I wasn't the only one in these big, huge coats and things like that. So wouldn't we all be better off if we just didn't have the freezing rain, don't you think? Sometimes I really wonder why God actually created winter because it's miserable. At least for me. There are some people that like it. I get it, but I don't. But God said that he created every season for a purpose. Spring for new growth. Summer giving warmth and nourishment to plant, plants and animals. Fall to remind us of preservation and comfort. Winter to come to an end, hibernate, and rejuvenation. So does this mean I can go hide in my house until winter's over? No? Okay. So I guess even my favorite season has its purpose. It's spring. It's spring. I like spring. Not only do seasons have their purpose, but different times of our lives have a purpose too. Ooh, did you see that? I just shifted to your life. That means there will also be times when we will cry, mourn, give up, and have to deal with bad people, unfortunately. Maybe you're in a good time. You're happy, and your family is great, and your friends just traded phone numbers with you, and you're doing well in school, and you had bacon for breakfast. Yes, Joshua, I just said bacon. But maybe you're in a sad season. Maybe someone you love has passed away. Maybe you're trying hard in school and it's just not working. Maybe you miss your friends because you can't see them like you did last year. Maybe we are all wearing masks everywhere we go. And maybe we're washing our hands a lot. That's not a bad thing, people. Wash your hands. Okay, so let me tell you a small story. I actually worked for a company and I won't name them, <coughs> at and it was a call center. Um, when I worked there, one thing that the training manager always liked to do was to move the name tags around every day. So you had to sit by someone new every day. I hate sitting by the same person because I get bored after five minutes and I'm like, you're boring, can we move on? So the funniest thing was walking in, and I always got there early, and he was like, hey, can you do me a favor? You want to put the name tags up? And I was like, ooh, I get to pick who I sit next to? Okay. So I put them up, and I would sit in my seat, and everybody would walk in and go, oh, again, I have to sit by somebody? No. But it was a change. It was a new experience. Why did we need that change? Meeting new people and having new experiences is really important. Most of us are stuck in our ways. We are missing out on the new experiences and things that people can bring to our lives. So what I guess I'm saying after all of that talking is seasons will change. Bad times and good times will come and go. You will change. Your friends and family members will change. Your home and school may even change. And your hair That will probably change too, hint, 
and don't look at my hair right now. <laughs> you should have seen me when I was a little kid. I didn't look anything like this. That's a lie. I look identical. But you have to know that God will never change. He's asked for the same thing time and time again. Your faith, your love, and for you to care for one another. If you have a relationship with him, he will never leave you. And I talked about this in the past. He will never leave you. He will always be there to help you through good and bad. God says that he has made everything beautiful in its own time, which means that I had to grow into this nose and these ears and just me to become the beautiful person I think I am inside and out. That means that he can take even the worst seasons of our lives and turn them into something more beautiful than we could ever have imagined. Be that change. Our God is incredible and could do great things through you, with you, and for you. Let us pray. Dear Father, change is good. Please pray that everyone knows of change and is willing to be the change. Please pray for all those who are suffering and need a change. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thanks, Lynn. And praise team, that song was beautiful. I was looking at some of the comments on Facebook as they were coming in. People, you can kind of tell generationally where people are. Some people are going, oh, I remember that song from, I know what I was doing when I first heard it. Now, I'm not that old, but I do remember that song when my sister, sorry, Cheryl, if you're listening, you are that old. But that's neither here nor there. So, so we are going to change. And I appreciate that lesson, Lynn. And for you kids that are listening, yes, you are going to change. And for each one of us, there are changes. Our scripture lesson, if you have not guessed already, comes from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. And it is on the screen, but it's the uh, contemporary English version, or the common English version. And its subtitle is, Everything Has Its Time. Everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There is a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping and dancing, for throwing stones and gathering stones, embracing and parting. There is a time for finding and losing, keeping and giving, for tearing and sowing, listening and speaking. There is also a time for love and hate, for war and peace. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I am doing something a little different. So... I'm trying a different program, so I'm having to shift on my iPad here, and, oops, let's see, let's make the correction here on that, nope, change that. See, I'm changing, and I don't know about y'all, but change is hard. It just is. This morning when I got the phone call from Gary, he called about 15 minutes before my alarm was supposed to go off. I had no idea why my phone was ringing because it's supposed to be Alexa that rings, and I'm so disoriented, but Gary calls and tells me what's going on, and I immediately thought, oh, great, everything's going to change. It's going to be a change, and that's hard, but I dealt with it. I thought, okay, we'll work through this, you know, but then another call came in. Eli's not going to be here. That's going to be a change, and then we had this idea we'd do something different for the music, and Angela called, and that change wasn't going to work, and then Steve called, and, and it just the change just kept coming. And then in the midst of all that, Valerie's on the phone with the hospital in San Angelo, and there's changes there. And we're trying to sort all that stuff out. It's change after change after change. And I about lost it this morning. It just it was too much. It's too hard. 
I don't want that type of change. And you know, yesterday, sometimes change is a voluntary change. And the change that Valerie and I decided uh, several months ago, we're going to make a slight home switch. Well, we took out her home office, did something different, and we brought her desk up. And Jennifer, our office manager, now has her desk. It's beautiful. Uh, she's using a little swing part of it at home for her desk. But then there's this huge bookcase, and it is heavy. And we're going to have to change. Where's that going? Well, it'll go in my office upstairs at the house. And we thought, oh, that'd be perfect. It'd be symmetrical, get rid of all this mismatch junk that's up there. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, how are we going to get it up there? Well, finally, as I'm about ready to make the decision of how and who I'm going to call, mm -hmm, strong backs, weak minds, remember that, guys? Well, I go upstairs, and I notice that it doesn't match my furniture. Valerie got this color for her office, and I got that color. So there was a change. Like, okay, now what do we do? Change is just hard. And then I had already cleaned out those bookcases that I was going to replace it with. So I've got stuff all over the TV room. And Valerie dared not go up there because if the house is a mess, she can't handle that change. And I said, honey, no, we're watching TV downstairs. We just are. You do not want to go up there. It's change is hard. Sometimes it's voluntary. When I made the decision to leave the city of Mesquite, that was a hard decision. That was a big change. Then I had some financial decisions to make and part of that change. So do I retire? I just quit. When the bishop called and said the opportunity to be your full-time senior pastor came up, all that changed. And those are voluntary changes. I could have said no, at least for a while, because I think I was probably, anyway, we won't go there with the city. But so often I dealt with it myself. You know, another change, when you decide to get married, you deal with that yourself. Well, actually, it does involve two people, but so many times change, we internalize. We think only of ourselves and what the impact is going to be on us. And then sometimes change is just thrust upon us. All this COVID stuff. If you had reflected back in 2020, the second Sunday of January, and written the storyline of the rest of 2020, no one would have bought that script. No one. But the change has been difficult for so many of us. It's been difficult for me. This has been one of the most difficult times in ministry that I've ever faced. And I know for many of my colleagues, we have conversations. It's been extremely hard for them. And sometimes the change that's thrust upon us we dealt with it during our prayer time this morning. Death, separation from our loved ones, friends that die tragically in accidents, that die too young. The death that impacts us, that separation. And part of my struggle with change is simply being good with whatever the outcome of that change is. I tend to analyze, I second guess, I suspect many of you do as well. Or worse, I tend to think that after the change occurs and I've made the decision or dealt with it in this particular way, I analyze it and I think I made the wrong choice. I made the wrong decision based on that change. The change was not for the better because of something that I did. And sometimes the change is just bizarre. After finding out that Valerie's mom was suspected of COVID, we were down there for New Year's, and New Year's Eve in San Angelo, in a house that has no internet, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, and it snowed, and it was gorgeous, it was really cool, we had about three to four inches of snow, but the change, that was not what we planned for New Year's, but we found out that she was suspected of COVID, and we take her to the clinic in El Dorado, and she's admitted, and all this stuff, that's not what our plan was. And then we come to find out that, you know, there's this thing that they pour over the back of cattle and sheep. It's some technical chemical treatment thing that ranchers out there in West Texas use. And it turns out that you can use that to treat COVID. You simply get this big syringe, and not a needle, but, you know, the applicator thing, and you put it on your forearm right there. And it's, I don't know, something like two cc's of it. So we tell Bo's 
husband, and he, I guess, didn't hear the change and put 12 cc's on. Well, I mean, they're treating COVID with this cow medicine, and that was a change I just couldn't come to grips with. I said, I'm not going to do that. Now, Valerie, if you want to do that, you know, go right ahead, but that's how they're dealing with it. It lessens the symptoms. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to change and do that. But come to find out that that research is actually going on. That's something you can get at Tractor Supply here in Mesquite, Texas. They're using that in West Texas to treat COVID with, to lessen symptoms and pre help prevent you from coming down with it. I don't know. Change is hard. I opted for the traditional path to isolate. That's why I wasn't here last Sunday. And I simply did not want to start mooing or bah in the middle of a sermon. So, I don't know, change is hard. Change affects me that way. So, how do we struggle with this change? What about you? What about us? And remembering that change is difficult. Now, it's not difficult at First Church. Not at all. Oh, yeah, remember style of music? We have settled in on a style of music. And that was a change for a lot of people. And that was hard. Right back here, there used to be a pit. There used to be an organ right there. Now, it was not a pipe organ. It was not a historical pipe organ like you would see in a, in a cathedral in Europe. This was an electronic organ that nobody could find replacement parts for. So we made a change. First church decided to make a change, take it out, and cover it up. And it's a good thing we did because back before COVID, our choir was at capacity. We had no more seats for the choir. We filled it in. We made that change. And that did not settle well with some people. Oh, and did I mention this thing called sanctuary renewal? Y'all remember that? You would have thought we were, I don't know, use your own analogy. But when we brought up the idea of flipping the church, you know, flipping the church, not moving from United Methodism to Presbyterianism, or to Lutheranism. No, simply saying, what if we made this sanctuary logical? Parking lots out here, everybody comes in these side doors, and if you're a moment late, you're coming in and everybody sees you that you are late. The main doors for you online, the main doors are right out there facing Galloway, and very, very few people ever use them. So we thought, what if we flip the church so that where people park and they come in would be at the rear, like 99% of churches in the U.S. are. That change, you would have thought, make your own analogy. But my goodness, the reaction. Change is hard. We all struggle. Maybe you want to change something in your life. Think about how hard that change is. Maybe it affects your spouse or your family and what that impact's going to be. Maybe it's a switch you want to make in Sunday school when we get back together. How hard will that be for some people to say, you know, it's time for a change. I've been with this Sunday school class for X number of decades. Maybe it's time to do something new. Or maybe it's convincing yourself that the change, that somebody else's idea might be a little better than your own. Might just be a little better than your own. And for us as First Church, we have to change also. The season that we are in as a church demands a change. What, what that will be is still to be determined. But we're all asking, how's it going to affect me? How's it going to impact me? What will it look like, this change? We're not comfortable with it. But the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over the same way and expecting different results. Think in your own life. Everybody makes New Year's resolutions this time of year. That's fine. I don't because I know I'm not going to keep them. I probably should. Maybe that would be some self-discipline involved. But if you make a New Year's resolution and you don't commit to a change, that's insanity, folks. That's just insane. If you're a student, and we've got some students out here, and you struggle in a particular class, but you continue to do the same thing, the study patterns, the homework assignments, all those things, the same way as you've always done, 
I'm sorry, the results probably aren't going to be a whole lot different. You have to change. And then there is time. I saw in the paper this morning, and yes, I still read the old printed copy of the paper, that in 2016, on this day in history in New York City, David Bowie died. I love David Bowie. I was listening to the songs yesterday. I was cleaning up that chaos that was upstairs. But Nicholas Pegg wrote a book, The Complete David Bowie, and the singer, looking back at his 1971 song, Changes, is quoted as saying, I guess it was me being sort of arrogant. It's sort of baiting the audience, isn't it? It's saying, look, I'm going to be so fast, you're not going to be able to keep up with me. It's that kind of perky arrogance of youth. You think you can get away with anything when you're young. Yet in that very song, Bowie says, time may change me, but I can't trace time. Time is the one thing that human beings cannot produce nor increase. We must live with time and the changes it brings. We do not have control, and that can be unsettling. But the writer of Ecclesiastes knew that about us. 4,000 or so, how many years it was that he wrote it. That beautiful verse, those verses, that poetic language, he knew that that sits at the heart of our lives, that change is so hard. And he's reminding us that there is a time for change, but there's also a time when we don't need to change. And I think the message for Ecclesiastes, he goes on to state different seasons in life. Stafford Wright wrote this, man is to take his life day by day from the hand of God, realizing that God has fitting time for each thing to be done. In the midst of change, Christians should recognize that each moment, each moment is God-given and should be lived in recognition of that fact. 2020 is not a year any of us want to repeat but there is a season for everything. And 2021 is a different season. It can be the opposite of what we knew this past year. It can be the opposite of what you knew in your life last year. So what do we do about it? The writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us that God is in control. We lose sight of that fact. We're so high tech, we're so intelligent, we're always right. But God is in control, and God wants to be in a relationship with you and with me. He wants to know who you are. He wants you to understand who God is. Even in years like 2020, the writer knew this and knew that his people face the same issues we face today. Break it down. Is it, is it the time and the season for a change in your life? If what you've been doing over 2020 and 2019 and blah, 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 is that the same thing that you're going to do in 2021? Or is it time for a change? If the answer is yes, then act. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes, but act. Act on that change. But also have the freedom to know, just as the writer knew, that if the answer is no, then relax there are other changes coming in its own time and season. So in your life, what needs to change today? Are you closer to God today than you were yesterday? You know, we're in the middle of this political season, the inauguration, the transition of power. And I remember President Ronald Reagan in the campaign, a very simple question he asked the potential voters, are you better off today than you were yesterday? A famous political quote. But God's asking, and I'm asking each one of us, are you closer to God today than you were yesterday or last year? And if the answer is no, don't be insane. Don't do the same things over and over again. Change. What must change? Why are you resisting? God has said, I'll never leave. I'll be with you. Have courage when I'm with you. That incremental change that we can do, 
I talked about Right Now Media and that preview we had. Right Now Media is an outreach effort of this church. Everybody whose email address we have and we send it out in the newsletter, you can get online and have access to over 20,000 different texts, Bible studies, leadership courses, you know, all kinds of stuff. I've only begun to scratch the surface. But the purpose of the, doing that for 2021 is renewal and revitalization. And that's not only for First Church, but that's for you and for me. And that resource, delve into it, find something, commit to reading and studying and doing something different this year to improve the spiritual life and get you closer to God. If we do that, if we individually do that, and if we as First Church do that, we can change the future. We can live out our mission of loving God, loving our neighbor, and serving this community. We can have an impact beyond anything we can imagine. Commit to that long-term change incrementally, one week at a time, one day at a time. Be involved like never before. Use the spiritual gifts God has given each one of us. Use them and ask yourself, are you closer to God today than you were yesterday? If the answer is no, do something about it. Maybe do something different. We can all do this together. We can form new groups. Right now, media, maybe, maybe a book intrigues you and there's a study guide with it. Find a friend. Start a group. Find two or three other people. Start a group. Do it online. Do it by phone. Once we get together, do it in person. The question is, the changes that you make, will they bring you closer to God? Will we take responsibility to follow God in every season of our lives? Only you and I can answer that question. Only you and I have the answer to that. So choose your answer wisely and see what 2021 can be for you, can be for your family, and can be for your church. Change. The time and the season is now. May the Lord bless each one of us as we adjust to a new reality and changes before us. In Christ's name, amen. Our communion invitation, we've redone the liturgy a little bit. Again, a change. But come to the table of Jesus, our Redeemer. Jesus invites you here as part of the people of God. Come to the table humbly, not because you have earned a place here, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love God and want to love God more. Come because Jesus first loved us and gave himself for us. Come because you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come because you want to experience the mystery of God's grace. And we call this the holy mystery. For those of you at home, have your bread, your juice, you know, whatever it is, an element that you can gather up. And let's celebrate communion, because all are invited. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. It's not First Church's table. That will never change. This is God's table, now and forever. May the God of new beginnings be with you, and also with you. People of God, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the one who makes all things, including us, new. Children of God, sing praises to the one who gives you new life. We praise the one who continues to surprise us with hope and grace. On the night in which he was handed over, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. So let us pray. God, our Creator, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose love pursues us our whole life long. Thank you for Jesus 
for giving your life to us in word and deed, even unto death, even death on a cross. Come, Holy Spirit, feed us with your love that we may be filled with power to love God with all our hearts, souls, and minds. Amen. And the people respond, We have come to the Lord's table. We have eaten the bread of heaven. God is the one who will transform us so that we can see Jesus' ears, hear with Jesus' ears, speak with Jesus' mouth, so that we can be the body of Christ in the world, proclaiming the good news of God's reign. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And if you're following closely, you think uh, I made an error there, so I changed it a little bit. We're supposed to break the bread, and that's our response. But this is the bread that Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body broken and given for each of you. And the cup of wine, the grape juice, the ordinary drink that God made extraordinary and said, drink from this, all of you. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ poured out for you. Holy Communion, that time when we come together and we celebrate that we are one with God. May that never change. We have no song, our communion song we normally have right now. So we're skipping down to the invitation to join. If you would like to join this fellowship of the United Methodist Church, we call First United Methodist Mesquite, Texas, we welcome you with open arms. Uh, it's a great opportunity to start 2021 on fresh footing, to say, I will make a change in my life by committing to be part of something. You commit to be part of something, not that we're perfect or that you're instantly going to be transformed into perfection, but you will be on a road with fellow men and women, children that are on a road to perfection, trying our best, making errors along the way, changing things that don't work, but always with the knowledge that God is with us and we want to be closer to God tomorrow than we are today. So if you would like to join, please send me an email, a text, a phone call. Let us know. We'll figure it out. I've had a colleague that did a baptism, which was amazing. And hopefully one day we'll have another baptism here when we're in person. But if not, we'll figure out how to do one so we can celebrate a baptism. And we come to that time of offering tithes. You have been a faithful church. 2020 was a very difficult year. It was a difficult year financially for everyone. We know people who lost their jobs. We know people who had hours cut back, friends, family, our neighbors. But you have been a faithful church, and I appreciate that faithfulness to move the mission of loving God, loving our neighbor, and serving the community. There is much to do, and 2021 is a place to start afresh. I encourage you to give sacrificially so that we may continue the work of the Holy Spirit in this place, in this time. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the gifts that are given. We give you thanks and we ask for discernment that we use them well. Dear God, you have put us in this particular time, in this place, for us to be your hands and feet to the world, starting with those immediately around us that need to feel your presence, need to know the hope that only you can provide. Dear God, bless all those touched by these gifts. In Christ's name, amen. And our offertory song, For Your Glory, we will do that another day also. So our announcements, we've talked about Right Now Media. If you have technical issues with it, and I know some of you have, let's talk. Don't give up on it, but let's have a conversation. We'll figure it out. That's just a change that's going to happen. But I encourage you, get in there, dig into it, find something new. Let's have reports back. I want to hear what you find. I want to hear what stimulates you. I want to hear what moves the needle for you spiritually. 
We have church council this Saturday. We'll be sending out information uh, tomorrow, tomorrow or Tuesday about how to do that. It will be Zoom. We will not be in person live. It just, it's too, we're going to be do no harm. John Wesley's one of his general rules. So we will try to do it Zoom. It's going to be difficult. Ike is our church council chair, and yes, I will visit with you tomorrow. And, uh, but we've got a good, good things to look forward to and things we're going to reflect back on. I mentioned earlier, it's checkout week for the church, so any contributions you want to have credited towards 2020 need to be in the office by noon tomorrow, by noon on Monday. I'll be delivering whatever we have to the conference office uh, that afternoon. Let's see, what else? I hope you got a copy of the email or the newsletter in, in the mail. If you received a copy and you would like to have just an electronic version, let the church office know. Let Jennifer know. Just call her, tell her who you are. She's still learning people's names. And let's make sure you have your email address correctly. And we will not mail you one the first of each month. That's not an inexpensive thing to do. But it's critical for those who need a paper copy, they get a paper copy. But if you can do one without one, we can save a little bit of money. So just let the church know. I think that's the announcements that we have, unless anybody has anything else. I appreciate you being here. The weather, you know, it's beginning to look a lot like winter, North Texas style. As we go outside and we slide around, we will have some fun. Be safe. That was just made up on the spur, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, Anyway, as we leave this building, you know, Elvis has left the building. As we leave this building, we never leave the presence of God. Now, sometimes we think we do. We get out in the real world. We get on LBJ, and we think God's nowhere to be found, particularly in that construction. But God is. God's in your passenger seat. God's in your back seat. God's with you. Are you closer to that passenger today than you were yesterday? Change. Change change. Hear now this benediction, and then we're going to have a video of the, our closing song. Gracious and holy God, as we leave this place, help us to remember, be reminded of that we leave with you, with you who long for a relationship, who long to be with us every moment of our lives. May we use this first part of 2021 to establish new habits, new traditions, new ways of being that draw us closer to you. Go forth now with the love and knowledge that God loves each one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. securely high